Most people waste their money by choosing a motherboard full of features they will never use. I can help you make a better choice. In this video, we are going to have a look at the differences between various A620, B650 and X670 motherboards, from the cheapest to the most expensive models. And I will help you pick the right motherboard for your particular needs and processor. Let's start with the A620 motherboards. They are the cheapest AM5 options, perfect for basic tasks such as playing games and doing office or schoolwork. By the way, I'll leave the links to all the motherboards featured in this video in the description below. The links will take you to an Amazon web store local to your country. Now back to our topic. The ASRock A620M HDV M.2 Plus is the cheapest A620 motherboard I recommend. A cheaper version of it exists, but it costs just $10 less while being significantly more inferior in terms of features and limiting your CPU choices to just 365W Ryzen 7000 non-X models. Do yourself a favor and just get the ASRock A620M HDV M.2 Plus instead. It has a much better power design that supports most Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, with the exception of just two most power-hungry Ryzen 9 7900X and 7950X 170W processors. All other Ryzen 7000 series CPUs will work fine on this motherboard. The HDV M.2 Plus features six USB ports, one of which is Type-C, two Gen 4 M.2 SSD slots, and four SATA ports, providing decent storage expansion options. However, you do get just two RAM slots. But the motherboard supports up to 96GB of DDR5-6400 plus memory, so RAM capacity shouldn't be an issue for most users, as you will probably end up installing just two 16GB memory modules for a total of 32GB anyway. In case you need more USB ports and even more RAM, you'll have to increase your budget by another $20. At $115, you can get your hands on the ASRock A620M Pro RS. It features 8 USB ports, one of which is Type-C, 4 DDR5-6000 Plus memory slots for up to 192GB, and a much better cooling for the power delivery system that should help if you don't have air conditioning and must use your PC in a hot room. For additional $10, you can get the Wi-Fi 6E version of the Pro RS that will let you connect your PC to the internet wirelessly. Bluetooth is also a part of the Wi-Fi package, so you can connect your wireless headphones, keyboards, mice, as well as other Bluetooth devices directly to the PC. It is worth noting that all A620 motherboards are limited to PCIe 4 standard, so you won't be able to take advantage of the latest Gen 5 M.2 NVMe SSDs that offer blazing fast speed. But the vast majority of users don't need it. Gen 4 is already fast enough to handle future games, so you don't have to worry about your Gen 4 SSD becoming outdated anytime soon. As you can see, the more features a motherboard has, the higher the price goes up, so it makes sense to only pay for the features you intend to use. The B650 motherboards are not as straightforward as the A620. They are divided into two types, regular B650 and B650 Extreme, or B650E for short. In terms of use cases, the B650 is very similar to the A620. It is perfect for regular users doing simple things, like gaming and light work. The B650 Extreme is a more serious line of products aimed at semi-professional type of users, who require more storage expansion and higher number of USB and PCIe devices. Another notable difference between the B650 and B650 Extreme is that all the Extreme motherboards come with a PCIe 5 slot for a graphics card, while regular B650 uses PCIe 4, which is still more than good enough for many years to come. Let's take a closer look at the regular B650 first. In this category, the ASRock B650M HDV M.2 is the best value motherboard. Currently, it is priced at $125, which puts it in direct competition with the A620 boards that I was talking about previously. At this price, I recommend choosing the B650M HDV M.2 over anything else, because it features an 8 plus 2 plus 1 power design that can handle even the most power-hungry Ryzen 9 7950X at full load all day long. There is no thermal throttling as the VRM stayed relatively cool at around 80 degrees during a 1-hour Cinebench stress test. 
In addition to that, the B650M HDV M.2 is packed full of features, including a 2.5 gigabit LAN, 7 USB ports, as well as the latest and greatest Gen 5 M.2 NVMe SSD slot to accommodate the fastest SSDs currently available on the market. The second M.2 SSD slot is Gen 4, which is still very fast and much more affordable. So, there are plenty of storage expansion options to satisfy the needs of an average user. The only downside is that it doesn't come with Wi-Fi pre-installed, but that is easily fixed because there is a special M.2 slot for a Wi-Fi module, and the I.O. panel has holes for the antenna to be installed. You'll find the Wi-Fi 6 and 6E kits among the links in the description below. The more expensive B650 Pro RS at $209 doesn't really offer that much more value over the B650M HDV M.2. The main differences are one additional USB port on the I.O. panel, two more RAM slots for a total of 192GB of memory, and a larger SSD heatsink, which is useful for keeping that Gen 5 SSD cool and performing well. Let's move on to the B650 Extreme. The B650 Extreme is on a whole another level in terms of features. Unlike the A620 and B650, the B650 Extreme comes with a PCIe 5 slot, ready for the next generation of graphics cards. Although importance of the PCIe 5 is questionable, because PCIe 4 slots are fully compatible with PCIe 5 devices, and have plenty of bandwidth to handle future generations of graphics cards for years to come. That is, unless the GPU makers will do something stupid, like use 8 or even 4 lanes instead of 16 on their future mid- and high-end graphics cards. Well, it is possible, nothing indicates that it will happen. In terms of storage expansion, the cheaper B650 Extreme motherboards usually offer one Gen 5 M.2 SSD slot, one Gen 4, and one Gen 3, for a total of three NVMe SSDs installed directly onto the motherboard. However, the more expensive models, such as the ASRock B650E Tai Chi and Tai Chi Lite, offer 1 Gen 5 and 2 Gen 4 M.2 SSD slots, as well as 12 USB ports, one of which is USB 4 that can be used to connect Thunderbolt devices and monitors, as well as transfer data at blazing fast speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. The Tai Chi Lite is a new release which has proven to be as capable as the $370 B650E Tai Chi while costing $70 less. If you prefer function over fashion, then the B650E Tai Chi Lite is the way to go. Same as the B650, the X670 motherboards also come in two flavors, X670 and X670 Extreme. Both target professionals who need a lot of storage, as well as many USB and PCIe devices. If you are building a gaming PC, then X670 is not the product you should be getting. The B650 Extreme high-end motherboards offer the same level of quality as the high-end X670 Extreme, so there is no reason to pay more. The regular X670 chipset is unpopular with motherboard makers, hence why very few X670 motherboards exist. For example, ASRock decided not to make any at all. The main difference between the X670 and X670 Extreme is that the Extreme version comes with a PCIe 5 graphics card slot. The price difference between similar X670 and X670 Extreme motherboards is so small that it is not worth living with compromises that you'll have to make by going with the X670 over the X670 Extreme. Probably that is the main reason why most motherboard makers decided not to make the regular X670 motherboards and stick to selling the Extreme models instead. I fully agree with them on this matter. Just get yourself an X670 Extreme board. Most of them offer excellent storage expansion with up to 8 SATA ports and 4 M.2 NVMe SSD slots, one of which is Gen 5. Some high-end X670 Extreme motherboards, like the ASRock X670E Tai Chi, come with two PCIe 5 slots, so you can install two GPUs without any bandwidth worries. In addition to stunning looks, this motherboard features 8 USB Type-A ports and 2 USB 4 ports that support Thunderbolt devices and monitors. The 24 plus 2 plus 1 power design enables professional CPU overclocking on this board. And of course, it includes Wi-Fi 6E and high-quality audio built-in. The cheaper X670 Extreme models, such as the ASRock X670E Pro RS at $270, are almost as capable as the $500 Tai Chi. 
The Pro RS offers the same number of M.2 SSD slots, but there are two fewer SATA ports. It also comes with Wi-Fi 6E, but the built-in audio is very basic. And since the Pro RS features a 14 plus 2 plus 1 power design, don't expect the same level of precision CPU overclocking as on the Tai Chi or super low VRM temperature, but it is way more than good enough. As for the USB devices, the Pro RS doesn't have USB 4, but you can still connect 10 USB devices via the back panel. If you don't do crazy CPU overclocking, then the X670E Pro RS is a much more sensible choice. Save that $230 you would have otherwise spent on the Tai Chi and keep it or use it to upgrade another part of your PC or spend it on a better monitor. I hope I managed to help you make a decision. Reward this video with a like if I did and subscribe for more PC related content if you haven't already. Also don't forget to use the links in the description below to buy your motherboard if you want to support this type of content. It was I, Vadim, until next time.